Hello everyone, welcome again to one more broadcast of Minority Business Spotlight. I am your host, Danielle McCoy, and I am the CFO of the McCoy Financial Group, and this broadcast is being sponsored by the McCoy Financial Group. We have with us today a very special guest, someone that if you are from our community, which is the Columbus, Phoenix City area, you will know very well, but for those of you that are from abroad, we want to introduce Mr. Adrian Chester. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's Thank up, you so everybody? much. <laughs> Thank you for agreeing to be on our show. I have been looking forward to this broadcast for yes, some time sweetie. because you are just such a charismatic young man. I've watched you for some time. Yes, ma'am. Believe it or not, for God, several years. Yes, 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 and I have seen all of the wonderful things that you are doing, not only in a ministry, but in the marketplace. Yes, ma'am. And so we just want to talk about a few of those things today by giving you just a moment, first of all, to introduce yourself to our audience. Who is Adrian Chester? Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you for having me. And good afternoon or hello to everybody out in streaming world. My name is Adrian Chester. I serve as lead servant, pastor of Greater Bellwood Baptist Church here in Columbus, Georgia. And for the last three years, I've been a licensed realtor in Columbus, the state of Georgia, and also uh, the state of Alabama. And I just love my community, love doing what I do. Uh, I'm married uh, next month. We'll celebrate six months of marital bliss. Yes. Keep us lifted. That's right, always. And uh, <laughs> father of two daughters, and I just love what I do. Great. And again, congratulations on your nuptials. I have not had the pleasure of meeting your beautiful wife. Yes, ma'am. We ought to do much. <laughs> yes, and I would love to meet her. So, hello, beautiful wife, Desiree, correct? Desiree, that's Desiree, right. it's so nice to meet you via the live stream. That's right. That's right. And hopefully we get a chance to visit one another in, uh, in person. And thank you so much for embracing my wonderful brother in Christ and loving him and standing with him yes, and being that support. Because I know all so well yes, that it takes that teamwork to make everything in life come together That's especially right. when you are in ministry so she's playing a very very yes ma'am important role That's my favorite That's right. <laughs> yes absolutely so let's get on into the meat of this conversation you introduced yourself and you told us that you are a pastor and of course this is a minority business spotlight so the question is why wasn't being a pastor enough i've been taught growing up in church and i grew up in a pentecostal church yes, now, a lot of people know that Pentecostal, sanctified, hook us, feel five baptized with Jesus on your mind, renovate your right. life. <laughs> Going down in the water in Jesus' name. And oftentimes there was so much emphasis put on our calling being directly connected to pulpit ministry and service in the church and that God would make a way. Yes, ma'am. So why wasn't that enough? Why delve into the arena of entrepreneurship? Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, for me, it's always been a passion to just do more and always uh, have uh, broad options. And I, you know, just even referring back, back biblically, uh, everyone who Jesus called not only had a calling upon their life, but they also had a skill set that I would presume came in handy at some point in time. Uh, during during the ministry in which they were with Jesus, particularly uh, the fishermen in whom Jesus called. Uh, he had someone working with finance, <laughs> you know, and Levi who was the tax collector, and so he had an understanding of, of money and, and things of that nature. And even the example of Paul, the Apostle Paul, the Bible teaches us, was a tent maker. Mm -hmm. And so for me, um, I mean, for the first uh, six years of pastoral ministry, that's all I did was just... Okay. You know, pastor full time. I tried a couple of hustles, cutting hair. Okay. Uh, what else was I doing? Cutting grass. I had a landscaping <laughs> business. All that type of stuff. Playing on skill sets or on skill sets that I had developed in some other season of my life, in another season of my life. Uh, but real estate was something that I could do uh, where I could make my own schedule and uh, make a make a living uh, for for my family. And it's really my retirement plan. Uh, that I've been pastoring since the age of 24. Uh, and of course, the ministry in which I serve provides a comfortable living for me where I wouldn't have to do anything, mm -hmm. but I do know I'm not going to be pastoring all of my life, and so I wanted to be sure that I had a skill set that I could call it my own. I didn't have to punch a clock. And uh, when I'm finished pastoring at the age of 50, 
the Lord says the same. Okay. That's what I feel he said at this time. Okay. I'm 33 <laughs> now, so I have 17, what, 17 more years uh, that the Lord will, you know, allow me just to continue in real estate and have a itinerant ministry uh, later on in life. So let's explain this to the people who don't know, because some people may think, oh, that's really young, though. But you started in ministry really young. Yes, ma'am. How long have you been a minister and a pastor? So I accepted my call to preach at the age of 19. Three months out of high school, I did my initial sermon at the age of 19, and I started pastoring at the age of 24. And so I'm 30, I just turned 33 at the beginning of this month on January 2nd. And so I've been in ministry for what? Uh, that's... 14 years right. and pastoring for nine years. Right. Yes, and so, and that's definitely, if you were to look at that, when if you were at work on a secular job, that's definitely the length of time that a person would work before mm -hmm. going into retirement. Mm -hmm. Think military is what, about 25 years? Yes, so most jobs, when you get to that 25-year mark, it's like, okay, you've done your part. That's right. Yeah. And, and if you stay in any longer than that, you just give them a check. And waste, right. And wasting folks' time. That's <laughs> Right. That is too funny. And, you know, even I wanted to do this type of show for a few reasons. Not just to talk about the different types of business and entrepreneurship, but I wanted people to get a one-on-one -on -one look, a firsthand view, a behind-the-scenes view yes, of the hearts of the people that they are doing business with when they choose one of the entrepreneurs that's on our program. You talked about the goals that you have for yourself and your family and into this, but what are also the rewards and things that you see that are helpful to the people that you are serving as a realtor? Yes, ma'am. So the number one goal is uh, allowing people to build generational wealth, whether you are on the buying side or uh, the selling side. So I take the, the buying side, the reward I get there from experiencing helping people to accomplish generational wealth of if you're buying real estate uh, it's one of the one of the investments that you will make in your life uh, that seldom depreciates that real estate is always you know going up in value because as as land becomes more scarce as building becomes more scarce whatever's currently in the ecosystem which are houses whether it be single family or multifamily houses, it's always going up in value because of supply and demand. Us coming out of the crunch of the pandemic, uh, interest rates were were zero percent, but that and people were buying homes, but the rate of buying wasn't keeping up with the rate of building homes, mm -hmm. and so with there being many people in the ecosystem to buy, it drove up appreciation for homes and, and houses. I say, for example, my home that I bought in Lake Bottom in 2016 at the age of 26, uh, when I purchased the home, I paid uh, $112,000 for it. Okay. Today, that same house is valued at 190000 a three-bedroom, one bath. And unless something just drastically happens, if I wanted to sell my house, that means that I've made, just by owning the house, I've made almost $80,000 that when I cash out, that's $80,000 that I put in my bank account. If I'm, on the, if I'm on the selling side, or if I'm on the, we talked about the buying side, and that's an example of the selling side. If someone is in a home that you're wanting to downsize, or if you're just moving or changing locations, whatever you want to do, the equity in that home of you of you just having that asset that someone else needs, uh, you can set your own price based on the, the the ecosystem of the market, and that's building wealth. But you're not going to get that same return on investment by purchasing a car because it's it's forever depreciating. You're not going to get that same level of return on investment most definitely if you're renting from someone else. Because you're you're paying them two times. They're not only cashing in on the equity that they're building in the asset, but you're paying their mortgage for their house, their dream home on the other side of town. So those are just a few examples. Wow, and such a wealth of information. I don't know where to start, but I will start here by um, agreeing with your testimony. Because I purchased a piece of property, oh my goodness, 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. Bought it as... 
um, in a foreclosure. I paid twenty nine thousand dollars for it, and I was a late bloomer, but got wind last year of how the market has changed and values of home had gone up. And I had no idea that when I got an appraisal done, that the property is now appraised at one hundred and forty three thousand yes, dollars. And it blew my mind, so you know what I did. I didn't go get all of it, yes, but I went and got a little bit of yes, it. And, and when you talk about building generational wealth, if I were to pose the question and come to you but say, but I'm, I'm, I'm 26 years old mm -hmm. also, I have a job, maybe I have one child, and people are telling me it's so hard, though, and maybe I should wait. Why shouldn't I wait? One, one of the reasons why you shouldn't wait is because no matter what your financial situation is or even your credit is as of today, there's a home for everybody, right? There, there's a home for everybody. Now, your credit is going to dictate what that home looks like. Uh -huh. Don't get me wrong now, of, of, especially if you, are, if you are borrowing to make the purchase. Uh, you need to make sure that you're, that you're working on your credit and and getting factual information of what lending officers will be looking for uh, but I mean anyone if if you there as many lending institutions that there are here in the United States there's someone somewhere that will be willing to approve you right uh, and the the better you put your the more intentional you are about putting yourself in the best position you're not only going to get more money that you can borrow, but you're going to also get a better interest rate. So that as you mm -hmm. pay that money back, uh, you're not just throwing money away uh, on interest. So someone who's saying that they can't do it right now, yes, you can. You just need a game plan, and you need to start and put a put a timeline on what you want to do, and, and it'll get accomplished because there's a home for everyone. What that home looks like um, now is... It's dependent upon your, your credit score and your in the money that you're bringing to the table. But as I always tell people, uh, marry the house, but date the rate, okay. the interest rate, <laughs> right? And so if you see if you see a house that you really love, it's best to go ahead now and get in on, a, on an interest rate, even if they are still high within the 6, six and 7% range, um, at some point in time, those interest rates are going to come down. Right. And if you're doing what you're supposed to do, you're going to be able to refinance. When I bought my home in, in 2016, uh, I have an interest rate of like 3.1%. Mm -hmm. Right, That was in 2016. If I would have waited until now to buy a home, I would be paying double. Seven. Seven percent. Mm -hmm. Right, absolutely. Because that was one of the things that I did run into with... Um, I never had a mortgage on the house. Yes, ma'am. So they just called it, did it like a first mortgage. And the same thing my lender told me, as soon as the rates drop down, just refinance. So I'll be able to get something better because me, still the 26-year-old, listening to what you're saying, and it's like, well, who do I go to to get the game plan? Yes, ma'am. I, I don't know what to do. Is it someone outside of the realtor? Or is that what you offer as a part of your package when you are helping someone buy a home? Yes, ma'am. So for me, uh, I will say all realtors are not created equal. Okay. Uh, but for me, <laughs> I'm a, I bring a team with me that although I'm a licensed realtor, uh, I have persons that I can refer you to that if you are having credit issues, uh, like uh, Miss June, if you are having credit issues, she can put you on a plan, right, okay. and, and help you get your credit together. Uh, if you are if you're ready to make that step of saying okay well my credit is good or decent and I'm ready to purchase home I have preferred lenders that I send you to after you uh, get your pre-approval we find a house I write up the contract for you and your contract is, is accepted I have home inspectors that I can refer you to mm -hmm. after we get through the home inspection all the other nuances are saying okay well we need to get this room painted, this room painted. I have contractors that I can refer you to. And because I send them volume and we have a working relationship, I always advocate for my clients to get the best package of, of whatever person on the team has to offer. So uh, I, I always recommend to people to start with the realtor, right? And let that realtor earn their commission. Let me earn that commission by making sure that you are put in contact 
with uh, the best of the best as far as resources uh, so that you aren't taken advantage of by persons who will have you running around in a circle because you'll have some lenders or, or some you know vendors, particularly lenders, that unless you're ready to do and buy right now, they're going to send you on a merry-go-round and you don't want to just be, you know, toyed around. Right. And so, and what we want to commission each and every person who is watching today, that if you are in the market for buying a home, if you think you're in the market That's for right. buying a home, if you feel like one day you want to be in the market for buying today, a home. Today, next year, whatever. Right. Make sure that you get in touch with Adrian Chester, and he's going to give you his information in just a moment on how you can find him on social media, how you can reach out to him locally where his office is. But you make sure you get in touch with this young man because I will say that it was the best thing mm -hmm. I ever did. I rented for so long, moving from place to place. And this is what I just want to share with you guys. It's not yours if you are renting. That's right. You're paying somebody else. You're paying somebody who lives out of town or on the other side of town for them to live in their dream home. Right, and you got to pay to mm -hmm. live somewhere. That's right. You are not going to be able to escape a monthly payment to live unless you pay cash for a property. But if you're renting and you're like, well, I, I, my rent is X amount of dollars, I don't want to pay that much. Why not? Mm -hmm. and it, one of the things I did is <coughs> when I prepared, when I was 24, 25, moved back here to Columbus uh, from grad school in Atlanta, I made sure that that one year that I did rent, that it was, it wasn't just a hole in the wall, right? Mm -hmm. So that when my loan officer looked at my history, they can say, oh, well, he's already paying X, Y, and Z. We know he's able to pay this price over here for an actual mortgage. And so that, that plays a big factor now as creditor, this price over here for an actual mortgage. And so that you want to make sure that you are on the right road because again you're going to have to pay something somewhere to live and i think if you can help me with the exact numbers on here or percentage wise but i've looked at how much it costs to rent mm -hmm. and a little house like the one i was talking about i think years ago i probably could have rented it for a three bedroom two bath house um less than two thousand square feet the rental average rental was like six seven hundred dollars mm -hmm. I looked at some houses down the street that are the same size that people are renting for twelve, thirteen hundred dollars right. a month. And that's no utilities included. Right. And also, if I had pulled the maximum amount out of that house, I think my mortgage payment would still have been a little over a thousand dollars. As opposed to if I went and rented the same house, I was gonna be paying more and not paying towards the equity in the house, not paying towards ownership in the house. So home ownership is the best route. If you have the thought in your head, if it's an aspiration of yours, reach out, let him get you started. It may be a relationship that's not going to produce something right overnight, but it's going to get you the game plan right and get you started in the right direction. Before we go, one more thing is we've talked about home ownership and just some of the steps that it takes to home ownership. And basically, you don't have to figure it out. Just remember step one. Step one, call the professional. Call the professional. That's right. Get in touch with the realtor. But if there's anybody out there that's watching that has the aspiration to do what you're doing, what are the steps? How easy is it to, or hard, <laughs> to become a realtor? Yes, ma'am. So if you're in the state of Georgia to become a realtor, uh, you need to take a 75-hour pre-license course. Uh, for me, uh, one day the Lord put the burden on my heart while we were, from church-wise, not doing in-person activities in 2020, right? I said, well, I think it's time for me to go and take this real estate course. And I went to Columbus State and took the 75-hour course, meeting twice a week uh, at Columbus State. But there are other options where you can do in-person or just online. I've known some persons who, who do their coursework in a little over two weeks and go and take their test. It'll mm -hmm. make a million dollars, sell a million dollar homes. So let me stop you right there. So the hours, these are just literal hours that you just spend a minute, those many hours on the course? Mm -hmm. So, so that as really long is as, a matter yeah. of a couple of weeks. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So as long as, like, for those who take online courses or even in, in the Atlanta market, you can go and take a, a crash course from 8 to 5 for 2 or 3 weeks. Okay. And every day, all day, every 2 weeks, or for 2 or 3 weeks, 
and you can come out of there with all of your hours that you need as long as you fulfill those but if you're taking it online you can do it at your own pace of if you if you if you're online learning and can and can pass the modules and get your 75 hours i know some people who've done it in less than a week oh, and wow. they go and get go and take their estate test and get a realtor license and what's the fee again for the class, yes. it depends. It depends, okay. Yes, ma'am. So at my brokerage, uh, Prestige Property Brokers, uh, we'll be beginning a, uh, I just finished up my instructor coursework uh, to be able to teach the real estate class. And so we'll be offering uh, those classes within our brokerage for persons who want to get their 75 hours. And speaking of brokerage, and, and then you can give us your information, of course, on where to find you. How do you know that you're connecting with the right brokerage? How do you connect with where you are? And then, of course, let us know how to find you. Yes, ma'am. So I knew that I was co connecting with the right brokerage just based off a of relationship with Travis and Kia Chambers. Okay. Uh, we've had a long-standing relationship, and I really didn't want to go to any of the other big name or box name realtors when I could support uh, two people who poured into me for so many years. And I think, too, and not, and I'm not ashamed to say it, and I think, too, in not supporting the box names, but you also were pouring into people who are rooted yes, in this community, who have the heart and the pulse of this community and who are giving back. So you know that when you're making money and you're making money for this brokerage, that these people are taking the money and they're putting it back into the little boys and girls that's right here in Columbus, right. Georgia. And I think that's another important piece. So I salute you in even making um, that decision and seeing you keeping the money right here that's right. in yes, our community. So how can we find you, Mr. Adrian Chester? Yes, ma'am. So you can always reach me at 706-332-6423. Uh, that's my direct number, my cell phone. Uh, on Facebook, it's just Adrian J. Chester, or you can go to my business page, Adrian J. Chester Realtor, or on Instagram or TikTok, Chester the Closer. All right, Chester the Closer. Y'all got to remember that. Chester the Closer, well, thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview and giving us as well for information. And guys, I wish we had more time. So this is what I want to do a little bit yeah, later on this year. Back. Yeah, yes, we're going to come back again because I would like to do a, a class that gives us a little bit more in-depth information on the steps of the home buying process going through the credit so that people can get rid of the intimidation factor yes, because i'll tell you i'm i'm a few days over 28 yes have been in business for myself for 22 years and when i went to get that loan i was a bit intimidated mm -hmm. it took me months to even make the move because i don't know what i was afraid of mm -hmm. and so we just want to help calm the fears of some of the people that may be watching and i think information and education is yes, key in making a person comfortable yes, and i will say it, it even goes further than just buying a home for me like i did i delve into commercial real estate so okay. even like in this building there are three three or four tenants that I negotiated their leases for them, and that's residual income. Every month that they pay their rent, that I get a portion of that, right? And so, even if you are, even if you are a person who's looking for a space for your business, that I can help with that too, and making sure that you're getting the best bang for your buck. Wow, and that's good to know because had I known that, I would have definitely yes, come to you. And so we'll keep that in mind. Anybody that I know that comes looking around. For office space, I'm going to give them your card yes, so they can get in touch with you because we definitely want to make sure that we are sewing into great business owners in this community because I will leave you all with this. Not only is Adrian Chester a great realtor, but I know him to be an upstanding um, man, an upstanding pastor, and he's always everywhere oh supporting everybody, oh no matter where you go. I, I, I said to myself, I told Pastor Christian one day, I said, does he cut himself in half and morph to all over the place in the city? But there's not many events that are of quality and car um, caliber that you go to in this city and you won't see Adrian Chester. He supports everyone. When I made the phone call uh, and just said, hey, can you do the show? It wasn't a whole home. Let me get back with you. It was like, sure. What's the date? So this is what you are getting when you do business with this man. And, of course, if you want to go visit him on Sunday morning, what's the ministry again? Greater Bellwood Baptist Church every Sunday at 12. Has a great at 10. word. Every 10, okay. At 10. I don't know Has a great word, an awesome teacher. 
very sound, biblically sound, not going to give you something that's coming out of his head that he thinks might be that way, but he's going to give you the word of God. So thank you so much, yes, ma'am. Adrian, you. for doing the interview. You guys, we love you. We'll see you again on next Wednesday at 12 noon. Be blessed.